Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to talk about one of the things they don't teach you in dental school, which is how to take a professional headshot. And these are my tips because I've learned a lot along the way. I'm not a model, I'm not a photographer, I'm just an ordinary dentist. And when I took my first headshot, what, 10 years ago, I had no idea what I was doing. So I've accumulated a lot of tips and tricks on what to wear, how to do your makeup, and how to pick a photographer. I'll cover all those things, so if you want to watch, stay tuned. So if you guys are new to my channel, my name is Dr. Joyce Kong. I'm a cosmetic dentist in Orange County, California, and I'm on Instagram as at Joyce the Dentist. When I first started taking photos, I was so, so, so awkward. So if being in front of the camera is not your thing and it makes you feel super, super comfortable, you are not alone. But you know what, here's the thing. In today's day and age, we need good photos to market ourselves. This is an investment into growing our brand and you can use these photos for your website, for Instagram. I use my headshot everywhere. So the first thing that you wanna think about whenever you're doing a photo shoot is the vibe of the photo shoot. Now, if this is your first headshot, your vibe is gonna be pretty neutral. I would say that when it comes to any type of photography, the main goal is to look like yourself, but like a little bit more of a polished version of yourself. Now, given this, you can definitely get your hair done professionally, your makeup done professionally. But for me, when I was starting out, I didn't have the money to invest in professional makeup and hair on top of professional photos. So I did my own makeup and I did my own hair and I did it wrong. And I'll explain why. Let's dive right into the second topic is choosing a photographer. Photography can get really, really expensive. So when it comes to choosing a photographer, you have to look through their portfolios. I used to think that photography was all the same, like as long as they have a camera and as long as they can take my photo, it'll turn out fine. But no, you wanna choose a photographer that mostly does headshots. A headshot is one of those things I think it is worth investing in. Now that doesn't mean you have to spend a lot of money, but I think it's worth investing your time and effort to find the right person. What I did because I didn't have enough money at the time was I chose my photographer through Groupon and this person was just trying to build their portfolio. So I looked through their portfolio and I was like, hmm, I think that his photos are okay. Remember, at that time I didn't really know what I was looking for, but I was like, okay, his photos are decent. If I get photos like these, I'll be happy. So I chose him and 10 years later, he is a really popular photographer who is killing it on Yelp. So I took a chance on somebody who was more of a newbie. When I went to that photo shoot, I didn't know really what to expect. I had Googled what to wear, how to do my makeup and all that, but I didn't really know exactly what to do. And so what I found was that we were taking photos indoors in like his studio. And the way that I did my makeup was washing me out because of all the flash photography. And it wasn't giving me the look that I had wanted in my mind. So there was a look that I was going for in my mind that I wanted him to deliver, but I wasn't able to um, relay that information to him until I saw the photos that were coming out. The first 100 photos, were horrible. I was so awkward, I was like this. And I couldn't relax. So I would recommend turning on some music and trying to relax a little bit, but the first 50 photos might be quite horrible for you if you're just as awkward as me. <laughs> and my mom was watching from the corner and she was like, this looks so bad. <laughs> Cause I brought my mom and pro tip, I would recommend bringing your mom or someone who's brutally honest she would stop the, the session and be like, wait, and then she'd come and fix my hair and be like, your hair was out of place. And that is super, super important because I think a lot of people think, oh, well, things can be Photoshopped afterward, which they can, but if you can fix everything as much as possible before the photo is being taken, then you will minimize the amount post-production. Okay, so these days, I work with photographers that I've gotten as a reference or from Craigslist. I would say that for your first headshot photo shoot, you wanna choose someone that has experience being in a studio, maybe has a studio, or can do really, really nice outdoor headshots. What I ended up doing with that first photographer was I was like not happy with any of the headshots. They look so, so awkward. I think as I was sitting on a stool, 
and I showed him a photo of what I was like sort of trying to go for the vibe right and he's like we can't get this type of photo in a studio like this I was like oh really so we went outdoors he grabbed his camera and he found somewhere with really good lighting near a pool um, which is nice because there was like a nice reflection off the pool and it was nice being outdoors for me because by then I had loosened up a little bit but also just the movement helped me to loosen up. So we got our photo there and I'm really really happy with it. I used that photo for a really long time and it was definitely worth, worth the money and he did a great job. If you want more tips on picking a photographer and what to look for in these situations then I've created a guide for you guys. It's free and you can just click on it and download it. So let's talk about makeup because I had done my makeup incorrectly for the type of photos that I was taking. When you're in a studio, there are a lot of really hot, big lights in front of you and you need a little bit more makeup than if you're just out and about outdoors. I had done a very light makeup. I thought it looked beautiful in real life, but I needed to like crank it up because I was in a studio. So those photos I was taking in a studio kept turning out really washed out and it didn't look like me, you know? I wanted to, I thought that I would look like how I look in real life, but for the situation of being indoors, I really needed to add a little bit more makeup. So there are a few essentials. I wanted to make this gender neutral because I think guys also need to do a little bit before taking a photo. And there are a couple basics that I think are essential. The first thing that I would recommend is concealer because whether you're a boy or a girl, if you have blemishes on your face, yes, we can take them out post-production, but if you can start off with a clean canvas, that's one less thing to remove when you're editing your photos. I generally would recommend a foundation, um, a little bit heavier of a foundation for studio lighting, like a headshot but definitely concealer for both men and women. This one is Born This Way Multi-Use Sculpting Concealer by Too Faced. And I would put it right underneath here and spot conceal any blemishes. And that's if you're not gonna wear any um, foundation. If you have pretty good skin, then you can skip this step. <clears throat> the second thing are eyebrows. Yes, you two men, I think that if you darken your eyebrows just a touch, it really like brings a lot to the face. It gives a little bit more structure to your face. So this is one that I use. It's called the Anastasia Brow Wiz. And you just take this and then you just... That structure is gonna play off really well on the camera. The third thing, and probably one of the most important things, even if you don't do all of these things, is powder. You must powder your face, especially in the T-zone, so that you're not shiny. So this one's a Too Faced Ethereal Setting Powder. And what you do with something like this is you don't want to use a whole lot. If you use a whole lot, actually it'll cause a little bit of um, like this white cast underneath your eye. So just take a little bit, put your brush in it, Tap it off so that you don't have too much excess and then you just want to pat it underneath. You don't want to smear it, you just want to pat it in the T-zone area. So that's the forehead, underneath your eye, your nose, this area, and I even do like right there. This area I keep nice and glowy. For those of you who don't know what this is going to do, it's translucent, you don't have to color match or anything, it's just going to absorb the oil in these oily areas so that you don't look shiny when they take a photo of you. That's actually really hard to take out post-production. The fourth item I think is essential. <laughs> and boys, you don't have to do this, but I think this is super important when you're taking any photography with a lot of lighting is to contour your face. And you can go a little bit heavier on your contour. This is the Lawless Summer Skin Velvet Matte Bronzer. And you wanna avoid anything that has any sort of shimmer. You want things that are totally matte. What you're gonna do is take a brush like this and you'll make a three here. So here, here, here. So you're basically defining your jawline, defining this area here, and whittling this part of your face. You want to make your face smaller. <laughs> I think that's just like a tip that I picked up. Um, you want to just create a little bit of a smaller face. The way to think about contouring is that you're creating a picture frame. You're creating a defined border around your face. So you're just going around and making sure that when the photo picks you up, 
they see that that is the border of your face. Super, super important because like I said, when you're doing studio lighting, it washes out your face. So you need to give your face back dimension. If you're a dentist, obviously, I do much more when it comes to makeup, but I think it is about making sure that you look comfortable and like yourself. Like for example, if you don't typically put on a really bright lip, then don't do it. You know, this is your first headshot. If you're gonna take many more, then you can play up the different looks, but the first one, I would just keep it pretty like low key and neutral. I mean, there aren't rules per se, but here are a few tips. Stay away from busy patterns because it sort of confuses the image. I think a nice solid pattern shows up very nice on camera, like something that's like dark blue or dark gray is nice. Um, some people say to avoid really bright colors, but I think it's okay if that's like your personality. One of my personal favorite things to wear to any business event or even to something like a headshot is a wrap dress, a solid colored wrap dress. It just hugs your body really nicely, creates a nice neckline and also covers your arms, which I think looks nicer in photos. It's just a personal preference for me. Now, since we are in healthcare, I would say take half of your photos without your white coat and half of your photos with your white coat. The ones with the white coat are the ones that I ended up using because when you are a new dentist, or trying to put something on your website. A lot of times you're trying to establish yourself as an authority with the white coat. Now, the white coat that I used in my first photo shoot was the one that UOP gave me. And I think I've heard that they still give these white coats out, but it was so big for me. I'm a tiny person. So thank goodness for Metalita. Um, if you guys don't know what Metalita is, it's a white coat brand that will make very nice fitted white coats from really great material. And that helps you to just to look a little bit more polished, right? <laughs> the other white coat that I got from UOP, even though I brought it and it was clean and pressed, it was still like really bulky looking. Like I looked like a linebacker and I looked like I was flooding in my white coat. It looked like that white coat wasn't made for me. I actually keep one fresh Metalita coat that I don't use for work, that I use just for photos. Because I think when you have a really nice, crisp, clean white coat, it makes a world of a difference for your photos. Because what are you trying to say? You're trying to say, come to me. I'm your future dentist. I'm just joking. Well, but yeah, you are trying to say that. You're trying to say, I'm a kind, professional, meticulous dentist, come to me. <laughs> and if your white coat is looking like all nasty, it's not giving off that look. This is your first headshot ever. You do want to get editing done. So what I did with my Groupon person is he took a million photos, all of which I hated except for one. That one photo, I was like, this one works. This one's the vibe that I'm trying to give off. And he edited it and then sent it back to me. Okay, so those are my basic tips on how to approach a headshot photo shoot. I hope they helped. If you have any questions, drop them down below. And if you haven't yet, then subscribe to my channel. So I do have a guide for photo shoots if you want to click down below. It's totally free and take advantage of it. I will talk to you guys later. Bye.